I am going to establish a government market for gold at prices to be determined from time to time. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. Our own FedNow service will be coming online in 2023. We are examining whether a U.S. central bank digital currency would improve upon what is an already safe and efficient domestic payment system. A U.S. CBDC could also potentially help maintain the dollar's international standing. By May 1st, 1933, FDR required Americans to turn their gold into the government by making it illegal to own. And this was the beginning of the end of our freedoms. Nixon took the U.S. off the gold standard on August 15th, 1971. At this point, the dollar became a fiat currency, and once again, our freedoms were eroded away. One of my favorite Thomas Jefferson quotes, paper is poverty. It is only the ghost of money and not money itself. And just yesterday, March 15th, 2023, the Federal Reserve announced a July launch for the Fed Now service. And check this out. The first week of April, the Federal Reserve will begin the formal certification of participants for launch of the service. So that means we're just a couple of weeks away from the end game. We're in the end game now. If you're not familiar with what the FedNow service is, that's what I want to go over in this video. It is essentially the infrastructure for a central bank digital currency, which will mean we no longer have any more freedoms. All of our freedoms will be completely gone because the government will be able to control one side of every transaction that takes place, so they will be able to control everything. We will no longer be free. This is complete totalitarian control, and it starts in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much for watching my video. I do sincerely appreciate it. We're going to start here with the federalreserve.gov press release. This came out just yesterday, so it is breaking news. However, the FedNow service has been talked about for a number of months, and we've not known until now when they were actually going to be launching this program but essentially, this is going to be a way for people to bank directly with the Fed, uh, as the name implies, FedNow service, and be able to send and receive money instantly. So what I actually want to do is scroll down to the about the FedNow service, and we're going to read this paragraph here. So it starts off, the Federal Reserve Banks are developing the FedNow service to facilitate nationwide reach of instant payment services by financial institutions, regardless of size or geographic location, around the clock every day of the year. Through financial institutions participating in the FedNow service, businesses and individuals will be able to send and receive instant payments at any time of day and recipients will have full access to funds immediately, giving them greater flexibility to manage their money and make time sensitive payments. Access will be provided through the Federal Reserve's Fed Line Network, which serves more than 10,000 financial institutions directly or through their agents. Uh, for more information, visit FedNowExplorer.org. So basically, this is going to be a new bank account that people can sign up for. I kind of like to think of it as the PayPal that the government is sponsoring, right? And this in itself is not a central bank digital currency. However, for a central bank digital currency to work, something like this is going to need to be in place. So this is the infrastructure for CBDC. So they're building the railroad tracks. Once those are in place, then they can run the train on the tracks. So the CBDC will be the train the Fed now service is what the train will run on. Now, the Federal Reserve is not just going to come out and say, look, your freedom is gone. 
we're here, we're taking over, you had a good run, but now we are in control. They're not going to say that. They're going to do this in layers, right? And this is the first layer. It's the first step for them being able to take over and get complete control. So with this being launched in just a few weeks, with them starting to sign people on, this is where they get all of the control. This is where they eventually phase out cash and they're going to force everyone to sign up for this service. So when it launches, I'm not going to sign up for it. You're probably not going to sign up for it. Most people are not going to want to participate in this pilot program. Most people are going to see through what they're trying to do. However, some people will sign up for it. They're not going to understand because the Fed has come out and said, look, this is not dangerous. This is so that you can send money faster. They're trying to paint it in a good light, but we know what they're really doing. There's obviously something nefarious here. People will use this program and eventually they can force everyone to use it. It's as simple as saying you cannot get your tax return unless you have a FedNow account. You can't get your social security checks. Uh, they're going to force all government officials to be paid through the FedNow service, all of the military to be paid through the FedNow service. So they're going to do it in steps, but eventually they can force everyone to sign up for this. And then it's basically over at that point. Now we're all banking with the Fed. I want to briefly cover some more news that dropped yesterday regarding FedNow, and that is tacit to facilitate FedNow payments uh, or we can just call it what it is here. Uh, in the U.S., blockchain operator Tacit has announced that it will provide access to the Federal Reserve's FedNow payment system, which is expected to launch as a pilot project uh, later in 2023. Tacit will serve as a business-to-business on-ramp for FedNow through a client-facing application program interface, or API, both the companies Interbank and Intrabank services will provide FedNow access. So one thing I wanted to say about this is even though Tacit is a blockchain operator, they're just providing the on and off ramps to the FedNow system. They're not actually running the system, at least I don't believe they are. Uh, in addition, the FedNow system is not in itself a true blockchain, although it may use that technology um, because a true blockchain should be decentralized. That was kind of the whole point of blockchain technology to begin with. And how can you get more centralized than literally banking with the Fed? So I wanted to mention that as well as down here, check this out. Uh, Tacit has signed on six banks to participate in the trial, but those plans will need to be adjusted as one of the banks was Signature Bank, uh, which was recently taken over by the government. As we know, that bank failed a few days ago. And so, yeah, they're going to have to uh, <laughs> figure out how to uh, work around that. And the last part of the article here, while the Federal Reserve is moving forward with its FedNow development, there are also pilot programs currently underway testing the feasibility of creating a digital dollar, which could potentially be issued directly to you. U.S. residents by the Fed through the FedNow system if they opt to integrate it with blockchain technology. So there you go. I mean, that's basically hook, line, and sinker. This is the path for the Fed to essentially roll out a CBDC. This is step one, and it's just a couple of weeks away. So we're kind of living in a crazy time right now where everything is changing so fast. I think we're all going to blink and then it'll be too late. It'll be over. They will have complete control and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So like I said before, they're going to start rolling this out in layers and the FedNow service is just the first layer or step one. It's the infrastructure. It's the backbone of what will eventually be the CBDC that we're all forced to use. And I wonder with those banks failing last week, if that was just a coincidence or if it's part of a bigger plan. Because remember, it was the Fed who are the ones that actually raised rates, which crushed the banks. They caused the banks to fail. And now they're coming out with this Fed Now service, uh, which seems like a light at the end of the tunnel, but it's really the devil in disguise. 
So I wonder if there's something bigger going on here, if they're sort of orchestrating all of this. It certainly seems that way to me. Now, if all of this worries you, and if you want to retain anonymity, if you want to retain your freedom, then you can transfer some of your wealth out of the system we currently use. And we have this fiat currency system, which is slowly transitioning into a digital system. But you can take some of your wealth, you can buy physical gold and physical silver because those are real money and you'll still be able to make transactions outside of the system that everyone else uses and you will still have your freedom. So I've recently purchased a large amount of physical gold and silver. I've been stacking it over the last five years. And even if the central bank digital currency gets rolled out tomorrow, I know a lot of my wealth is already outside of that system. So I know that I'm protected. I'm still going to have freedom. And, you know, once they roll out a CBDC, it's possible that they will not allow people to even buy precious metals at some point. So I think it's important to get out of that system as soon as possible. Remember that quote from Thomas Jefferson, paper is poverty. It is only the ghost of money and not money itself. Well, what is real money? It is gold and silver. Paper is the ghost of money, but a central bank digital currency is not even paper. It's a ghost of a ghost. So it's literally nothing. So if you want to protect yourself, I say buy some physical gold, buy some physical silver. Uh, now, I am curious what your thoughts are on the FedNow service. Feel free to leave those down below in the comment section. I want to say a massive thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next one. Silver Dragons out.